This is a Women with Disabilities Victoria podcast. We acknowledge that these podcasts were recorded on the traditional lands of the First Nations people of this country. We acknowledge their elders, past, present and emerging. We acknowledge that sovereignty has never been ceded and this is and always will be Aboriginal land. From the Outskirts is a series of podcasts featuring women with disabilities who live and work in regional Victoria. I'm Liz Wright, a disability activist and advocate. I'm also the Manager of Community Inclusion and Women's Empowerment at Women with Disabilities Victoria. All the interviews were recorded in each person's home or workplace, so from time to time there is unexpected background noise. Are there any bands you'd travel the world to see? What about attending a conference to celebrate your favourite TV show? Kelly Butler's done it all. She has a passion for pop culture and she's travelled the world to meet her heroes. During this episode, there is mention of depression, anxiety and mental health. Please take care and if you need support or assistance, call Lifeline on 13 4. Hi, I'm Kelly Butler. I live in Cobram, which is on Yorta Yorta land. Hi, Cal. How long have you lived on Yorta Yorta land? Uh, I've been up here in Cobram for about 15 years. Where did you come from? Uh, Melbourne originally. Um, grew up in Scoresby. Oh, so what would make you move to the country? A tree uh, change or? No, I sort of travelled, moved around a bit. I ended up in Tasmania for 11 years, sort of branching out away from, fa- not away from family, but getting my independence. Yeah, sometimes you have to put a bit of space yeah. between people around you. I think particularly if you've got a disability and everybody wants to be super helpful mm-hmm. or two directional. Yeah, so, you know, I moved, when, when I moved back to the mainland, I lived with Dad for a while in Cranbourne. Yep. And um, by that time, Mum was living up at Tokemal, so I ended up up this way to be closer to her. And how did you find the the change? I mean, I know Tassie is very different to Melbourne, but how did you find the change when you came up here? Well, I love it up here. Yeah. It's much more relaxed and laid back. And um, I go to Melbourne now and I just, I'm, I'm there and I'm like, there's too many people. How can I handle this? Yeah. Like yeah. too claustrophobic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, now you're a wheelchair user. Yeah. How do you find moving around Cobram? Um, most of the time it's all right. Yeah. But there's still places I can't go, shops I can't get into. A lot of the footpaths need a lot of work, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty common kind of thing throughout all of regional Victoria. A lot of footpath work needs yeah, to be done. Yeah, yeah. It's mainly, they're mainly just really a lot of the shops yeah. are so hard to get into and I don't, I still can't understand why it's not illegal to not have a ramp. Oh, yeah, I'm with you and I think it should be, uh, you know, completely illegal. Not even to have a ramp, but even if they cut in, got rid of the step and just cut in yeah. the curb as the door opened. Well, that's what uh, the news agency did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, every dollar you, every dollar someone spends, whether you've got a disability or not, is a dollar that that exactly shop makes. Exactly right, yep. Um, now, you've got a small furry creature with you. Who's yes. that? This is Lexi, Lexi Lickalot. She's yeah. uh, my, assist- she? my assistant's dog. She's a chihuahua and she's three years old. She's um, she's a mind dog. So What does uh, that mean? She helps me with anxiety and yeah. um, she's helped me with my depression and things like that. She has saved my life. At the time, I'd, I'd recently lost a dog. I'd had, had yeah. Monty for 16 years. Oh. He wasn't a service dog, but um, he was my baby. Yeah, love of your life. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I was pretty depressed about that, pretty down, um, and I was struggling. We had a few losses in our family, uh, my grandparents and things like that. And yeah. when I got her, she filled this giant gap in my life. I think people don't understand how much you can love an animal and like with the cumulative effect of losing your grandparents and things yeah. too. But animals are just that comfort when you come home and, or, you know, when you obviously take Lexi yeah, with you everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, yeah. But, um, you know, I love it when I get home and my cat does a little lap of honour around the <laughs> legs and, you know. It's, it's unconditional. That's what yeah. it is with them. It's unconditional love and... That's what it is with her. She's just, she's given me something to live for. Yeah. Did you train her? Yeah. They What they do, they get a trainer who teaches yeah. you how to train the dog so that it helps with your bonding because it's, it's not good having someone else teach her 
to do these things for someone else. Yeah. So that's that's why they taught me how to do it. So you've been inseparable for three years. Yeah, uh, yep, just about. The only time we've been apart was I went over to England for a few weeks last year and she had to stay with mum. Yeah. And then just the other night I was in hospital for a night so she had to stay with my mum then. So I'm always interested in tourism and accessibility <laughs> because, oh, <yeah. laughs> you know, the, the difference in experiences. You're a wheelchair user. I'm a woman with low vision. I found England overrated as far as how accessible it was. Oh, but definitely. I, Oh, so you do too. Well, you can tell the place was built by the Romans, but like they've had, what, a couple of centuries to put some ramps in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's. Yeah. I know. I think it's. I think people get overexcited and think the UK is so advanced and, yeah. and all of that sort of stuff, but there's a million bloody cobblestones, yes. micro doorways, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. However, I did notice that there were a lot more shops that had little portable ramps that they would yes. put out for people, which yeah. I thought. You know, they're thinking. So that's yeah, in, in London especially it's like that. But there was, there was a lot of times when I was in London where I'd, I'd had to go on the road or something or travel halfway back down the street to get across the road because there was no ramp to get down and get across. No curb cuts and no things curb like cuts. that. No curb cuts, yeah. yeah. So were you just um, on your own? Yep. And where were you staying? What, just in Hotel or? Uh Yeah, yeah. I started off in Birmingham. Yep. I went over there because I'm a bit of a... I'm into a TV show that not many people know called Winona Earp. And what is it? Winona Earp. What's that? Um, is it ba- based like on a female Wyatt Earp? She's Wyatt Earp's great great granddaughter. Oh, and she's my God. inherited the curse. It's kind of like supernatural, but with chicks. Oh my God! You have to text that to me. Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm a huge fans are called Earpers, and um, they had a big Earp convention over in Birmingham. And what does an ERP convention look like? Uh, some of the actors were there. Yeah. The creator of the show was there. There's, Fantastic. And there was probably oh, at least a couple of hundred of us in this hotel. Did um, you dress up? No, I didn't. I couldn't actually, only because I couldn't fit my costume in my bag. <laughs> Why? Is it sort of like an elaborate costume? No, I'm, I my costumes, of there's there's a police officer and she's really quite hot. And um, <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I sort of dress as her, but she sort of wears this, Akub- not a Cobra hat, you know, like the old Stetson, that's yeah, it, Stetson yes. hat. And I wouldn't have been able to fit the Stetson in the bag without wrecking it. You would have had to have worn it on the plane. I would have. <laughs> would have got some looks. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm just yeah. going to sit down beside you. Yeah. Um, but, so you went to Birmingham for that. What was yeah. it like? Like, was it great fun? Oh, it was amazing. And did you meet up with people that you've been like on Facebook or Insta with or TikTok um, some, or something? Yeah, yeah. I did, and I made so many new friends, and they were all so amazing. Like the second night, one girl comes up to me and she says, Oh, we've booked a table at this restaurant. We've booked a spot for you if you want to join us. Oh, that's so, brilliant. You know, I thought that was just so, so nice. Yeah. So I went with them and just, and yeah, I'm still in touch with them on Instagram and all this sort of thing. And Oh, that's fantastic. Where did you go after Birmingham? Uh, I got, the, after that, I got the train down to London and I stayed in Pimlico. Where's that? It's not far from Westminster. So, yeah. so really local to a yeah. lot of things happening. Yep. Yeah. And I, cause I, I took my Bartek with me. I've got this motorized trike that hooks on the front of my wheelchair and that got me around so much. I hardly had to use public transport because. I was just on that. Is that just like an electric attachment that yeah. you can charge in your room? Yep. yep. How did they look after that on the plane? Thankfully, they did not damage it. But my I had my wheelchair was kind of new at the time and it had some scratches on it, so oh, I yeah. wasn't happy about that. But at least it was still in working order, so. Yeah, the worst thing, arriving yeah. and either being left in the meet and assist room and no one remembers that you're there. Yeah. Or arriving and all your equipment's gone. Yep, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. I, well, I was worried about the chair. I even put... Um, those GPS tags on them. So you stayed in London. Did you go anywhere else after that? Uh, I did day trips from there. I went out to Stonehenge, which was the most amazing place I've ever been. Did you go into the middle of the circle? Are you allowed they, No, you're not allowed to anymore. You're only allowed to walk around, but it just has this feeling to it. And it, I sat there and I felt at peace. It was the strangest thing. People um, say that and I often wonder, because I haven't been, I often wonder if, if it's true, like do you get the feeling that you really felt yeah, it? Yeah, I felt it, yeah. Wow which I didn't expect. I thought, oh, you know, I mean, I always wanted to see it, but I thought, bunch of rocks, you know. Yeah. But there's just something about it. It's just, 
I mean, I'm not I'm not a religious person, but it felt yeah. sp- spiritual almost, you know. Yeah. It was weird. Wow. Yeah. When you came back from overseas, did you feel like that had changed you somewhat having your first international trip? Well, I'd been to Norway before as well, so. Oh, oh really? Tell yeah. us about Norway. It was my second, my second international trip. I went to Norway about six, seven years ago, I think it was, yeah. Were, were you erping? No, I wasn't erping. <laughs> I was aha ing. <laughs> You were what? My my favorite band is Aha. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They did that Take on Me song. Yeah, and that film clip that everybody yeah, talks everybody about. Yeah, everybody talks about. Yeah. Oh, really? So um, what was that like? That was amazing. And I I got sick of waiting for them to come back to Australia. They came here in eighty seven, I think. And I've been waiting for them to come back. I'd yeah. never seen them live or anything, so I thought, bugger it, I'm going overseas to see them. So I did, and I saw them three times. I got to meet them. Oh my god. And yeah. What are they like? Well, it was only like a 30 second meet. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's hard to tell, but they were really nice when I did meet them. Yeah. So what about romance? Are you... Sadly single. Oh, well, sadly actually, I should single? say happily single. Well, are you happily single? Yep, yep, yep. Um, so you're not looking for love? Look, if it fell in my lap, fine. Yeah. But I'm not You'd out have searching to for it. push Lexi off. Well, <laughs> she'd have to give the okay for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. I've been single all my life. I've never had a relationship. Wow. Yeah. Is it an aspiration of yours? Or oh, look, I'd has like it become to. to... Has it become... It's not that important to you. Well, look, I, I really would like to have a relationship. I would, but um, I, I know that it's never going to happen. You know, that's sort of in my head that it's never going to happen. So oh, I'm I just really curious. Let, right, let myself be investigate this. Oh, okay. No, no, just really. <laughs> why is it in your head that it's not going to happen? You just don't but, believe. Because I'm 52 years old and I've never had anyone interested in me. So why would it happen now? Well, can I just say, when I first met you, this is so embarrassing for me, but I thought you were about. 25 <laughs> and then just Jen goes no no she's not and I thought oh well you're very youthful yeah immature no <laughs> <laughs> oh well um if things change I definitely want to interview you if um th- that situation changes oh, yeah. yeah what keeps you occupied you know during the week well I work I work on weekends I work out at a um at a holiday park in the kiosk and in reception so that fills my weekends up and through the week well I don't know really we go for lots of walks yeah Lexi and I Visit my family, go into town a lot. Uh, once a week I go down to Shepparton, have some therapy done on my back, so I sort of have a look around at town in there. I go to the cinema a bit here in town to the movies. So, Cal, what do you like about coming to the Cobram Hub? The people, yeah. It's just all so friendly and it's nice to talk to people who have got similar issues. Um, and not to be the only disabled person yeah, in the room. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. Know, you sort of fit in. It's like everyone outside in the, in all the other rooms are the weird ones. <laughs> Look, I'm plugging the hub here, but it's, you know, the Cobram Hub has a beautiful vibe. But the other thing too is it is a safe place for women to yeah. get together and not to feel self-conscious about disability and not to feel uncomfortable about being yourself. Mm, exactly. Okay, so so you keep yourself pretty busy and you like living out here. Do you like the bush? Yeah, I do. Yeah. When, when we go for walks, because I take my, my trike, we go for long walks. Yeah. We walk right along the beach, right along right along the river and up the levees. And oh, that sounds we'll really walk for, nice. We go for about, well, we went for 6Ks this morning. Wow. She walked the whole way, so. Well, she's been exhausted oh she went home and played she's amazing she's done done 10ks and went home and played the other week she just keeps on going i tell you I just wind her up and off she goes <laughs> oh that's beautiful now you just said to me earlier when we weren't on air that you'd had surgery on your eye yeah. how's that going um it hurts <laughs> yeah yeah on monday two days ago i had my eye straightened so do, were you awake through that procedure? No, thankfully. Oh, God. Yeah. No, Thank I was, God. I was under for about an hour and a half apparently. So, um, But I got the train, well, caught the bus at 5 o'clock on Monday morning, three degrees, thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I caught the bus and the train down to Melbourne and I had my bar tech and zoomed off to the Iron Ear Hospital. Yeah. Um, had it done Monday afternoon and then yesterday morning I... Got them to let me out early so I could catch the early train home. 
And what's the recovery? I'm actually not sure. That I've got to go see them in about a fortnight. Okay. I've got to go back down for a checkup. So, so it's not. Did you have sight in the eye before? Yeah, it yeah. Turned, it was it was just... turned out when I was yeah. born. I was born cross-eyed, and they did repair it, but it still wasn't right. Like my my right eye was still looking out. You know. Yeah. To the side, and, and most people didn't notice it, but yeah. I knew it was there, and it bothered me. Yeah. So, I thought to myself, I'm. 52, well, 52 almost, and this is something about myself I can fix. And if, if, if it helps my confidence because I know that I'm not going to, you know, because of the way that I, I looked like that, I'm so self-conscious about yeah, it. Yeah, So if it helps my confidence or something like that, well, and if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because I still, you know, I'm, I'm not pointing in two directions now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, you said, um, well, you're gay and living in a rural environment. Mm -hmm. What's the pressure of being protective in a regional area or is it? I actually haven't found any negativity about it. Yeah. But it is still a lot in the closet here. Um, I'm a member of uh, Goulburn Valley Pride, Danny Shepparton. Yes. And we do a lot of things down there. And about oh, eight years ago, I think it was, I tried to start up a uh, pride group here in Cobram. Yeah. But it, it just didn't take off. Um, people just didn't come to it. I think that small town, they're probably still that little bit scared. Yeah, and Shepparton's got a much bigger population. Oh, definitely. So what sort of activities does um, Goulburn Valley Pride do? Um, well, they go to a lot of the marches. They do a lot of fundraising. Uh, last week we they had a festival in Queen's Gardens for... Um, Ida Hobbit Day. The Ida Hobbit Day, yep. yeah. So I went down and helped on the stall there and... Yeah, so just just a lot of stuff like that. Is that sort of the, like a safe and and welcoming community, oh, like the hub community is definitely too? Definitely is, yes. So that's great. You like yeah. you've positioned yourself in two areas where you can be absolutely yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, no one else in my like close family is gay, and um, you know it's sort of hard to like you know I can't sort of sit there and go, oh she's cute and you know sort of thing, and my family sort of looks at me strangely. They'd be you uncomfortable. You yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Whereas when oh, well, wait till they hear this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you know, like when I'm down there and I'm sitting with the girls and we see some someone you know cute walk past, like, oh she's all right. She goes, oh yeah, look at her. Oh you know. Yeah, so that's nice. So, to you have know, that sort of community. It's not to, it's good not to be embarrassed by. Being attracted to somebody. Yeah, of course. You know, so it's it's that. And they understand a lot of what I'm going through as well with the the whole gay side of me and things like that. So, you know, it, it really does help me. So, Cal, I hear you're a geek and you're going to Comic-Con. So what's <laughs> Comic-Con like? It's just big, giant pop culture convention down in Melbourne. Yeah. It's Oz Comic-Con. Uh, I volunteer there when they do the Melbourne ones. So what do you volunteer as? Like just as um, – like- They normally put me in the photo booth area. So we basically wrangle the crowd when photos are being taken. Yep. And, like, you get to actually hang out in the booth because they have a lot of actors and things there. So you get to sit there and have a chat with them and things like that and – do you, um, do you dress up for that as well? No, no. I think you I should don't. start dressing up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. It sounds no. like you've got the gear. Oh, yeah, I could go as, I could go as, off, as Officer Hot, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should take it down and do it. Well, you should. I <laughs> yeah. think you should. And what aspirations do you have for, the you know, the next wee while? Like are you thinking of going back overseas? If if I had the money, I'd be off travelling right now. I'd love to go to Canada. That's my one place I'd really love to go. And, well, in, I would really love to go to Manchester in, um, in August because that's when the next uh, convention's on. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe you'll be in Tats Lotto. Maybe. Maybe. I can make it to Manchester and see all my friends again. Oh, see, that'd be great. Yeah. Cal, it's been absolutely lovely speaking with you today and, and you I would really love to catch up with you soon and yep. I definitely want to see you as a uh, policewoman hot <laughs> or whatever her name <laughs> yeah, is. Officer hot, yeah. Officer hot. Um, sheriff. She's sheriff now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, she's been promoted. Mm. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. It's thank been you. really, really lovely to hear about you and what you do here in Cobram. You're most welcome. Thank All right. you. Thanks, Cal. Thanks. To find out more about Women with Disabilities Victoria, go to wdv.org.au.